New York City, New Jersey, and Connecticut are about to become what could be the mecca of legal marijuana in the United States. Recreational marijuana now legal in New York. I signed three bills that will fulfill the promise of the constitutional amendment by legalizing adult use cannabis and decriminalizing marijuana possession in small amounts. The rollout has been far from perfect. The store or dispensary, one of many across New York City, has been operating since August without a state license, at least not yet. Each state dealt with its fair share of illegal activity while the government's regulations of cannabis were written into law. Recreational dispensaries in the Garden State began selling the plant in April of 2022. Then New York and Connecticut followed suit at the beginning of 2023 after passing laws in 2020 and 2021. New York's partially illegal cannabis market, or gray market, has exploded since the state legalized adult use recreational cannabis. What we have seen recently is the proliferation of storefronts across New York City selling unlicensed, unregulated, untaxed cannabis products. Before the state moved to legalize, of those arrested, not convicted, on cannabis-related charges in 2020, 93% were black or Hispanic, according to NYPD data. The war on drugs' lengthy history of disproportionate arrests and convictions is well documented. During the process of legalization and actual dispensaries opening in New York, politicians in the tri-state metro of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut made it a point to undo wrongs done during the war on drugs by giving dispensary storefront licenses to those most impacted through social equity funds, councils, and applications, very similar to how it's done in different states. I really appreciate the fact that they're not allowing large corporations to open first, and they're really giving the little guy a chance. My mom said that she was uh, shopping at the Save a Lot across the street, and she told him her son's opening a dispensary across the street, and um, employees seemed pretty excited. Um, I've, I've been um, going across, meeting some of the neighbors, like neighboring businesses, and introducing myself, and everybody, you know, seems pretty welcoming. This is a great way that we could turn a lot of young entrepreneurs into a positive economic advantage, and utilizing their experience in being defeated in the drug war uh, to be victors and being able to get real economic advantage. As the state focused on its social equity applicants, the slow rollout has allowed this underground industry to flourish. The New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut tri-state area is uniquely one of the largest metropolitan regions in the world by landmass and by population, with more than 20.1 million residents. Data from research firm New Frontier suggests if there is continued pace in new state legislation, the United States cannabis industry could reach $71 billion in sales by 2030. Even at the state level, the 2030 projections see New York totaling 10% of the country's legal, medical, and adult use sales. So it's a high-stakes affair. After New York City, New Jersey, and Connecticut legalized the sale of recreational marijuana in the years 2020 and 2021, it took on average a year and three months to complete the regulation necessary for dispensaries to open, which is a long time for a recently legalized drug to have virtually no safeguards. As a result, the gray market thrived. Marijuana and tobacco are much easier to grow, much easier to produce. You can grow marijuana plants in your backyard. That that gives the black market an opportunity to, you know, uh, really capitalize on that because it's so easy to grow. Officials made it easy to buy and sell legal cannabis, but the rules for growing it at home are lagging behind in New York. It's been two years since adult use legalization, and New Yorkers still can't grow plants in their homes recreationally. New Jersey's rules are a bit different. Home cultivation for adults 21 and older is legal, but current operating dispensaries only have a handful of cultivators to buy from. Just 11 companies for both medical and adult use cannabis. I hope at some point the CRC board understands the predicament that the black market guys, the existing guys, face. You know, there's a lot of people who want to get into this business. They're trying their hardest. They're complying with rules. They're, they're trying to get in. I, I get it. I understand them. Uh, but from the existing guys, black market guys, who've already been doing this for decades, like, we can't stop and wait for the system to catch up to us. The other thing is, when you have massive grow sites all over a state, like you have in my state of Colorado, law enforcement is not able to go and inspect every single one of those grow sites and figure out which one's illegal, which one's not, which one's following the rules, which one's not, when you have millions of plants that are being grown. So it's it's easier said to regulate it than it is done. And, and the black market is really 
benefiting off of that. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is actively trying to control this exact problem. Hochul's office proposed new legislation to crack down on illicit cannabis stores, which would increase the civil and tax penalties for the unlicensed sale of cannabis and empower the Office of Cannabis Management and Department of Taxation and Finance to close stores engaged in the illicit sale of the plant. Violations of current cannabis law in New York could lead to fines of $200,000 for illicit cannabis plants and products. Despite the efforts, the slow rollout of the legal system gave way to a new market to grow and a set of customers with regular demands. I think that New York is doing all it can to help people get an equitable share in this business. I really appreciate the fact that they're not allowing large corporations to open first and they're really giving the little guy a chance. The tri-state area's prioritization of undoing the war on drugs is why several convicts of petty marijuana crimes are being pushed to the front of the dispensary license line. Like Tahir Johnson, the owner of Simply Pure Trenton, a legal cannabis dispensary in New Jersey's capital city. Business here and to be something that people celebrate is like, it's the craziest mind-blowing thing in the world. It's like so surreal. I get like, you know, actually thinking about it, every time I even think about the reality of what I'm actually doing, it gets kind of overwhelming, like emotion, right? I have to try to control myself to not even like come to tears. New Jersey's Cannabis Regulatory Commission lists this program as priority applications, which go to diversely owned businesses, social equity businesses, and impact zone businesses. Trenton, like other urban cities across the state, was front and center for arrests of, of young persons that, that had either were selling marijuana or even using marijuana. It's more likely if you're a minority that you would be caught or targeted by the police. And this enables them, it doesn't prohibit them from now being front and center in the, in the cannabis trade now that it's legalized. Despite New Jersey's push to prioritize those most impacted by the war on drugs, of the applicants who have applied for the social equity conditional cannabis licenses, only 20% of these businesses are majority owned, meaning they own 51% of the company or more. And only 16% have prior marijuana convictions. In order to operate your cannabis business in New Jersey, applicants have to go from a conditional license to an annual license, which only 5% of social equity business applicants have done. Cannabis legalization is new, but cannabis itself is not new. So there are people who have built their whole lives, their careers, feeding their family on feeding cannabis long before we ever decided to legalize it. And I think it would be hypocrisy that those people shouldn't get an opportunity to be a part of it also. New York City also placed an emphasis on offering opportunities to those impacted by the war on drugs, and stores are finally beginning to open and sell product. This looks different than it does in Jersey. The city will find a building, lease, and renovate the storefront for social equity applicants who will have to eventually pay this money back, plus market rate interest. Some issues have come up here. The Dormitory Housing Authority of the state of New York is having a hard time finding storefronts, which means very few social equity-owned dispensaries are opening just four in four months. Not all are convinced recreational marijuana is even something that should be legalized. There are 29 states that have yet to recreationally legalize the plant and one who has even voted to undo the legalization of recreational marijuana use in South Dakota. Even in states where it is legal, it may not be easy to do business. There are people who are getting into it. I do understand that but there are so many hurdles. Like for instance, the big corporations are here, they already have all their grow facilities, they have grow everything. And then they tell us, the little guys, that we're only allowed to buy our marijuana for sale through the system, but the system's not up and ready. So okay, so just say they gave me a license tomorrow. Where do I buy my weed from? I wanted science and research to lead this discussion for us to kind of slow this train down because um, there's an industry that wants to rush and legalize it and I think we win if we slow the train down and really understand what's going on with this first and what this drug does before legalizing it. I think that what we have to do is we have to make sure public health is first at the table and that those are the chief concerns that we listen to because um, you know the industry is making a lot of money on these new high potency products 
But all of our scientific bodies, like the American Society of Addiction Medicine, like the American Medical Association, they're all saying high potency products are one of the chief dangers of marijuana right now. Every cannabis company should be focusing on hiring people who have had previous cannabis charges and people who have come from communities that have been impacted by the war on cannabis. The cannabis industry made $26 billion in sales last year. And I think that with that, we have a responsibility to try to make sure that not only is there some ownership, but also there are employees and opportunities for people to be in this industry. Currently, New York State only allows outdoor flower and a lot of customers are looking for indoor quality flower. Um, and that's something that I hope will happen in the near future so that we can be, you know, America's hub for cannabis.